Hello. Karen? Yeah, Adam. Yeah, hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you doing? Good, good, yeah. It's nice Very to... well. Good. Are you uh, 917? You're in New York? I am. I'm in New York City, yeah. Okay. Have you lived here? You must have. Uh, yeah, I'm from, I'm from Brooklyn. Oh, you are from originally? And, mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I moved to Long Island when I was in um, oh. sixth grade. Oh, so, okay. I got I got both of that in in, in L.A. So, but I go back a lot. I I miss it. There's a lot of that New York I miss. Well, New know? York New York misses you. <laughs> yeah. I was oh. just there actually two weeks ago. Oh, um, uh huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just just um, a personal visit or. Well, I just finished a, an indie um, with a director friend of mine. We, the second time we worked together, and um, so we're just finishing up some editing. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, right. Submitted it to Sundance, rough cut, and Tribeca. So I mean, we're like eleven thousand and one. You know, <laughs> I get <laughs> it. I don't know how they're going to get to see all these. But well, um, no, I'm well. I'm on yeah. a I'm on a couple of. Uh, so I'm on a couple of screening committees generally. Right now I'm on the New York Film Festival screening committee. So there's a lot of us, you know, and we watch a lot. You know, we split it up pretty. It just, but that's a lot of, yeah, Sundance has got to have the bigger. Oh. Well, I think that the Tribeca one, we're 52,150. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I was on that committee too. The, yeah. You're on that too? Not not currently, but I was for at least two two years maybe. Yeah, two, maybe three. But yeah, so, that was hard. <laughs> What's the process? Like, how do you, um, a bunch of you, you, you come in as, mm-hmm. um, to tell me that, that the process, because I've been, sure. to, I've had films in Sundance, obviously, mm-hmm. can, you know, and how's work as well as others. Um, how does it work? Got me. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. I, you, you know, now it's all done online through without a box or one of the other uh, types of uh, yes. generally, you know, the, that type of uh, online op- um, options. So, right. so you get a, a, a log and you get a list. They provide a, basically a list of links for you, and then for you watch the movie and um, right on on you know off the link, and then the next step is there is a form. And in that form, you will probably leave a synopsis, uh, not a synopsis, but, you yeah. know, it's a, r- a short review. And there's usually, you know, depending on which festival, I mean, they all have their a, a slightly different way of approaching it. I've been on, like, I usually try to do one, you know, uh, uh, every, like, be associated with one, just because, uh, I don't know, you know, the, the problem with it, Tribeca actually paid, but most of the others, you know... They, yeah. There's a couple that pay, and some of the. I wouldn't do it. The only one I'm now doing it, and I, and I did it volunteer, was the New York Film Festival because of the kind of the pedigree. You know, I just figured the more I am associated with them, the better for me. So, yeah. you know, you know that's why. And we have deadline of when we have to get in all those reviews. Mm-hmm. So, so I, then you review it, or it, it's a it's a review, but it's not a critical. Re- it's I'm sorry, that's not what oh. I mean. I mean, it's not like a. A review that you would read in the newspaper, kind of. It's not. It's not going into quite that level. It's more. Um, here's what I found immediately. I responded in a positive way. Here's maybe what a less positive way. The strengths and the weaknesses. And again, it's just opinion. But it's the essential role, Karen, is that what all I'm really functioning as is a filter. So if I really respond positively, it gets passed on with a recommendation to a programmer. Okay. You know, to an actual programmer. So, this way, the programmers don't have to watch everything. Now, having said okay. that, having said that, if you were in, let's say, some particular film, and, and that filmmaker or yourself has a relationship with the festival, chances are it's gonna they're gonna have already their heads up about it. So, even if it goes through a, right. a screening committee, and, and that's what I I wanted to have some kind of connection. Um, uh, my director writer, she's fairly new to this, uh, just mm-hmm. the last decade or so. Um, and, uh, but I, I, uh, mm-hmm. I reached out to somebody who was at Sundance. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know anybody in Tribeca. And I just was like, are we even going to be seen? <laughs> you know? But when she was writing out the, um, the little synopsis, like all the boxes yeah. she had to mark off, right, the, you know, okay, the form. it's mm-hmm. got L- LBGT, right. it's got disability. So all those things they probably look at too, right? Oh, Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, because, you know, they were trying to have a diverse slate, you know. So, right, right. You know, and oh, they're not, so not only just, you know, you know, I've never, I've never accessed this part of the process. I, right. I, as a, as you know, you're almost like a producer. To college. Mm-hmm. What? You're kind of asking yeah. questions of a producer. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Yes. I mean, I do have some back end points and, and everything to really for me. So I'm more invested, um, obviously. And it's part of every step of the process. So this is so new to be on this other side. Normally, I just step into one of, you know, Hal's films. Mm-hmm. Boom, right. it's at a festival. <laughs> you know, yeah. and there I am with right. it. Um, you know, so mm-hmm. it's, it's kind of, I like it. I like it a lot. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I can understand that. Well, you know, I will say, you know, I think we're past this, the newness of a female filmmaker being a novelty, <laughs> but not much beyond that. So, you know, I think film festivals are still very much trying to create that equilibrium because then it gives them something to be proud of, you know, when it comes to gender gender equity at their festival. So so I will say it doesn't hurt to be a female filmmaker, you know. Yeah. A cis female, a cis female. Yeah, that is so true. Uh, what's, um, who's the new filmmaker? Just have them do my podcast. They don't even have to worry about the festivals. <laughs> <laughs> that's how That's how powerful this show is. I'm going to have to, I want to listen to your show. Please. I have a lot of great people on all the time. I mean, I really, and and what's exciting right now is I'm entering this phase where I've been having a lot of more actors on, you know, which is something I've been wanting to do, but I do, I have historically many actors on, but for every actor, I've had 10 filmmakers, you know? Right, right. Or people that aren't actors, let's put it that way. So frankly, not only is it help to get actors on because they're more known than, you know, directors but uh, right. I mean, to the average person i'm sp- talking about but that it's also for me personally it's exciting to talk to people about their craft about mm-hmm. you know their experiences and so i'm thrilled to to do that and and specifically uh, to to meet you i mean i've been following your work i'm not kidding i've been really following your work for a while do you know tom noonan has been on the show twice oh good good yeah yeah, so you've seen what happened once. <laughs> yes, I have. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. You know, we did that as a play first. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he... It's wild. Oh, I bet. Well, you know, so you can see, I would, you know, even though... I, so the thrust of this particular conversation is uh-huh. is the Long Island Trilogy, not surprisingly, in your relationship with <laughs> Hal. But, uh, and by the way, I have a question, just because you brought it up, that you were, you're, you're, it sounds like your more formative years were spent in Long Island. I didn't know if that had anything to do, I, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but, you know, considering yeah, okay. this is the Long yeah, Island Trilogy. Huh? Oh, so I was going to say is that I'm doing something a little different with this particular series of interviews around the Long Island Trilogy, and, and that is I've, I have these questions that I kind of wrote out. What I thought I would do is one way I'm going to present this conversation that you're having, with, that we're having, is splice together with a few of the other folks from those films that I'm talking to. Um, I, already, okay. I spoke with Martin yesterday, and, mm-hmm. and I'm supposed to, I think, speak with Edie tomorrow, and then I think Bill and Robert Burke. So it's very exciting for me because, you know, I, I came up with these films and I'm, you know, I, I think I'm your age. So I'm not suggesting I'm younger, but I, I just sort of was discovering cinema around the time Hal was making it in my own, my own uh-huh. films, you know what I mean? My own world of film, not my, separated from mm-hmm. my, my parents and everybody else. Exactly. So uh, I'm going to ask you some questions. They're very, very easy questions. And you can answer, and then I'll splice them together with everybody else, kind of making it a, mon- a sort of a, a, a oh. montage. But then I'm also, I will, yeah. then we can just sort of also have a little time, maybe if you, if you have time at the end where we can just also just, you know, chat like we have already, actually. So we've already done it a little bit, but we could talk about whatever you want to. And then, and then I can put this out in its own segment at a later time, a slightly later time. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, and then afterwards, you just if there if anything comes up that you don't want to touch on, or that you okay. you have regrets afterwards talking about, <laughs> it does happen. That Tom Noonan is such a creep. No, I'm kidding. Uh, things like that could slip out. You never know. Um, okay. And if there's anything that you think uh, either way, to just you know. Thank you. Let me know. Thank you. <clears throat> so these questions are pretty straightforward. Nothing that you wouldn't expe- expect, and I think it could work out really, really lovely. Okay. Uh, so uh, the first thing I'll ask you to do, which is, this is also not typical, is state your name 
and the nature of your relationship with Hal. I'm Karen Silas, and I went to uh, SUNY Purchase with Hal Hartley. That's where we met. And uh, I was in his senior thesis film, short, called Kid. And ever since then, we've been working together. So that's that's many years. <laughs> it, it is. <laughs> oh, Chris, right? You did a. Uh, you were part of also the uh, right. You were you were uh, also participated. So you're part of that purchase mafia. <laughs> that's that's right. <laughs> and it's a good it's a good mafia to belong. <laughs> <laughs> well, considering depending on who you're talking to, they're all good. You know, it depends. Uh, I guess that's true. <laughs> But also, you were you 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 even worked with him more recently, right? On the Ned Rifle, yeah, as recently just, as uh, three three or four years ago. Yeah, I yeah, I remember. Yeah. So my next question was: Do you remember the circumstances of meeting Hal? <laughs> so you've already t- already touched upon that's great, uh, and roughly when? So I guess when were when were the purchase years? So, yeah, nineteen. Oh gosh, I can't believe I'm saying nineteen eighty one to eighty five. Hmm. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so. In 83, I, I did a play with him. I forget the name. We'll have to ask how. Um, something about the Wild West country. And, mm-hmm. and that's where I met Bobby and Bill and Edie all around that, that same time. Um, and then he was doing a senior thesis film. And I only found this out later. Uh, just recently, Hal has been the Kickstarter for the trilogy, Long Island Trilogy, which brings us to this, this, this conversation, obviously, today. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were, he said that he asked me to be in his senior thesis film, and as you weren't supposed to use the theater company, the actors of the school, she, he had to go outside. But I did it anyway. <laughs> I wasn't supposed <laughs> to do it, but I did it anyway. Why? So, um, why was? Uh, yeah, why did I, they not want that to? Uh... I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Really interesting. Um, mm-hmm. We should ask Cal about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but maybe, maybe they wanted the film department, the director, writer experience to have actors outside of. The mm-hmm. conservatory. I don't know why, because um, it was a brilliant experience, and and we bonded immediately. And then I went on to do Trust and Simple Man, and you know, um, Ned Rifle. What what are the other? Oh gosh, I can't even. Oh tr- uh, yeah, I said Trust. Mm-hmm. Um, Alert. Yeah. So that was our beginning. Do you remember your initial, uh, excuse me, initial uh, perception of him uh, or your initial feelings about him? Um, I had a lot of feelings because we were all part of the same camp in a way. Um, I felt his true support of, of my, my acting, of my art, um, such warmth. He, I, I tend to be a little bit more emotional, and and he's not. So there was a little awkwardness mm-hmm. in the beginning because mm-hmm. I, I thought, well, am I too big, much for you? Am I just too much of a woman for you? How? <laughs> so we would have conversations like that and joke around. Um, and he, you know, I, I grew to understand his his personality and his character, which is more reserved. And, um, and that's also how he tended to direct me right from the beginning. He'd say things like, um, Karen, pull, pull it in. Not so much, less. So I've learned a lot from him. Mm-hmm. I'm early on, but I was 19, 20, when I first met him. And to have that, that vision he had such a vision mm-hmm. uh, of what he was looking for, and he was very clear, even as a young, young how uh, he knew what he wanted, mm-hmm. and and he had a great way of expressing it, and very minimal words. 
<laughs> right. No, it's very true. And I was talking to Martin, as I mentioned yesterday, about that. And he said he really had a hard time with that, figuring out that vision how, that you're describing from how, you know, what, what that was. And he felt he was kind of suffocating on some level. You know, he had a hard time. By the time he saw it, and then they had already moved on to Simple Men, he, he figured it out and then had much, much more positive experiences uh, going forward. But um, I don't know. You, you're saying you, you started to understand his where he's coming from I, I, uh, because he had such a in, unique style, right? And, and what he, yes, yes. So you just put yourself... Very, go ahead. I'm go sorry. Ahead. Oh, I was going to say, you just it sounds like you just trusted him, for lack of another word. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is true. And I, and I believe he trusted, trusted me, too. Mm-hmm. You know, um, there were moments there where I went, oh, am I really a Hal Hartley actor? Uh, you know, I see, you know, certain, you know, Bob and Bill and Martin, and they had such, you know, kind of monotone, uh, very, very very dry delivery mm-hmm. and, and they're kind of like that in real life too they're very kind of you see what you see you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. and and I I always felt you know so emotional mm-hmm. you know full of emotion mm-hmm. and it, it, one particular um, illuminating moment was when we were in Texas shooting Simple Men and Martin uh uh, Robert Burke and I, uh, you know, have are, are lovers, and he has to leave me to find his father, and I have to give him the keys, and I may never see him again. And keys I'm just to the car. Here, right. lonely woman on a farm, mm-hmm. running my own pub, and in and you know, uh, truly raw and and open and in love, and we shoot the scene, and I am. A mess. I'm just crying. I am, you know, shaking. I'm, you know, oh, you know, all my method asking. <laughs> yeah. All that work. And I, and I remember he said, okay, let's do it again. Uh, okay. Take two. Uh, I'm a little less. He's like, just a little less. We did, <laughs> I don't know how many takes. The last take, when there's not one drop of water in my eye and in my being, he mm-hmm. says, okay, that's it. Let's move on. And I was <laughs> just like, he said to me, Karen, all you need to do is walk to the table, take up the keys, turn around, look at him, walk to him, and give him the keys. And that has that direction has been in my my memory, obviously, forever, because it, it, it was the simplicity of it. You don't have to do much. And that's what I love about how directing, too. Um, it's on the paper. The words, say the words, move your body, and it's there. You would always say, you know, your, your face is like a mask. You don't have to do much. We would always, a lot of our characters would only have one costume. And I always thought that the oddest thing. I mean, oh my gosh. And, but there was a reason. It's like, this is your costume. This is Kate. This is who your character is. So there was that kind of simplicity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember that. Well, of course, I watched it again just the other day. So <laughs> it's not like it, it hasn't exactly been twenty um, whatever years. <laughs> but um, yeah, exactly. it's a very. You're right, though. It, it, the scene that you're referring to, where you gave him the car keys, and it looks like he's leaving. It's over. Even though you clearly love each other, it's a very moving scene. And then uh, I, I know it's a bit of a spoiler, but I don't know if a film from 1990 can have a spoiler anymore. But um, <laughs> You know, he comes back, and um, it doesn't feel like a sentimental or emotional manipulation at all anywhere in there. That's the that's the reward for that kind of approach, right? There's no manipulation going on there. No. There's no sentimentalizing. Mm-hmm. That, that's a word, right? Sentimentalizing. Sentiment, I guess. Yeah. 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 It's, it's very... Um, up front... And yeah, it's interesting. Did you guys ever watch? Did he ever reference any any films or any other kinds of work or anything like that? Um, so because you know you were there from the very very beginning. I mean, uh, from his. I know. 
uh, I mean, you made that short that you talked about uh, at, at uh, Purchase called Kid, I think it's called. Yeah, and yeah. Did he... I played a, a dental mm-hmm. hygienist or a candy striper. Mm-hmm. I remember wearing a candy striper outfit and a leather jacket on top. I mean, <laughs> that sounds <laughs> always, like it. You know, yeah, yeah. Even the choice of clothes is always interesting. Mm-hmm. You know, um, construction boots and, and, and a dress. And a button up blouse underneath the dress. Like, like, so it almost looks pioneer like, mm-hmm. you know? Yep. Yeah, I don't remember seeing if I ever. I don't think I ever saw a kid, but you know. I mean. Oh yeah, it's great. It's good. It's really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Yeah, you should you should uh, ask him. I wonder if I yeah. seen. It. I may have seen it. I, I can't. I have to go and check. You know, because I may. I I know that he has probably has a lot of his stuff on um, Vimeo or something. I will check with him. Yeah, and I think it's um, you know it was on film, so uh, mm-hmm. I think it's a little. He needs to upgrade it or something as well, but I, I don't know if he's gotten to that yet. Well, he um, certainly has. I ask him. Well, he certainly has with the er, with a bunch of his other work because almost every it's everything. He's kind of catching up with all the features. He really is. He is. You know, now this is I, the second box set. Mm-hmm. In like two years. Wow. Yeah. It's really. Uh, um. Yeah, I've been assisting. You know, helping him Kickstarter. Right. For all the you know. Uh, Mean, meanwhile, that film, did you see that film? Mm-hmm, sure. Yeah. Um, anything Hal does, I'll support. <laughs> the, and it's not like you guys probably have any kind of daily contact or anything. You're living on opposite coasts, and uh, yeah. it seems like he's really maintained his his friendships, or anyway. He really has. You know. Yes, he really has. I mean, for, you know, the story about Simple Man, I had... Um, I wasn't available to work in I mean, Unbelievable Truth. I just found this out through his Kickstarter blog that he was writing the last six, eight months, which I found remarkably insightful um, to, to read his, his journal entries, the blogs that he was sharing throughout the process of his career, the first, you know, mm-hmm. the Long Island trilogy. Um, and I don't recall... Uh, be uh, going up for a role in the unbelievable truth. My agent, I think I was working on some, I was doing some TV. My agent didn't even ask me because it was some TV thing back in the back in the eighties, late eighties, mm-hmm. and I never, I never heard about. I, I didn't even know that uh, he wanted to see me for one of the roles or have me do one of the roles. I found out. 20 plus years later when I'm reading his blog just recently. It's like, oh my gosh. So I missed uh, out on the unbelievable truth, but then I got into the truck and for the, the, the third film, Simple Man, uh, he had originally cast somebody else. Hmm. And I guess it just wasn't working out there. The cast, crew, everybody's there on set, day three, uh, in Texas, on location, and the crew, which we all, a lot of us went to purchase together, we're sitting around going, hmm, who are we going to get for this? And I think Frank, one of the, the grip, or the, um, a grip, he, he grip said, what about Karen Silas? <laughs> so, Hal and everybody's like, oh my God, that's a great idea. <laughs> so, um, so I get a call. And they, they said, you've got to read this, but you, you, you have to get on a plane tonight. You have to be on set tomorrow morning. And I, I read them, like, I'm there. And I got on a plane, and they welcomed me in, in Texas. And everything was organic and beautiful and mm-hmm. uh, great experience. Um, I, I didn't ask any questions about what had happened, and, but it was just perfect. It was so meant to be. And, you know, we went to Cannes together with that, um, which was just a trip and just a really wonderful experience. We were part of 10 top films. That's all I know. I mean, every, yeah. everything was just so overwhelmingly new for me. I remember walking out on the red carpet when, right after the screening, and we're all standing in a line. You know, I'm holding Hal's hand, and we're just looking, and I'm like, what do I do? What do you do? Because the paparazzi was all over the place. And he said, Karen, just move your head from left to right slowly and smile <laughs> and as he's saying under his breath um 
uh, yeah, that was that was quite an experience. Yeah, pretty phenomenal. Mm. It seems like it really set you on your professional course. This relationship. Yes, it, it is exactly. Um, you know, I loved working on trust. He uh, he he wrote that role for me. Um, I remember the day he came up to me and I forget where we were, but he said. I was living in Brooklyn, obviously, at the time. Um, and he said, I, I, I wrote this role for you. Mm-hmm. And I said, oh, what is it? And he said, what, what's her name? Her name is Nurse Kane. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Why? What might have to be Nurse Kane? I mean, I, but then when I looked back, I just saw Trust not too long ago, over the summer. Mm-hmm. Um, again. And it's really good. I mean, that, that simplicity, once again. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, I thought the work, Nurse Kane was fabulous. I, I thought his writing, the words coming out of my mouth, everything was just once again, you know, he really knows how, how to envision it. Mm-hmm. I never feel like he doesn't know what he wants. He might be surprised with something that you come up with, but he really knows what he wants. I think he envisions it when he writes it on the page. Uh-huh. When he storyboards it, and then rehearsal, like everything is very thought out, which is comforting as an actor. Sure. Right? Oh, absolutely, of course, that you're in capable hands, of course, I could see that. Yeah. 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 Right. And we also have a great, lots of fun on, on, on set, all of us, because we go back so many years, history says a lot, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah well, that was like one it. of my questions. What, 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 what was it like? What was a how Hartley set like? You know, I did ask. I was going to ask that. Oh, um, very, very contained. Mm-hmm. Um, what's the word when you when you efficient? Very efficient. Mm-hmm. Um, on time. Sometimes early. Never over eight hours. Oh. Um, mm-hmm. Jokes, laughter, inside jokes. Um, very respectful. Mm-hmm. Very respectful of the actors and their privacy and their process. Um, but there's also a lot of there's a lot of joy and fun because we can then relax. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did he? He ruined you for other directors. Maybe he missed him now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you'll have another opportunity to work with him. I know. I, we were supposed to see each other this past summer um, before I was shooting um, in Long Island again and, mm-hmm. uh, and Jersey. I seem to do a lot. Yeah, I think a lot of my indies are in back in New York. That's part of what I I miss too. Um, uh, yeah, what was the question? Oh, yeah, you answered it. It was just like what life was like on the set. Did you, um, oh, right. what area of Long Island did you grow up in, by the way? Uh, Shoreham Wading River. Okay, I don't know what that is. Way uh, out. <laughs> it is? Way out on the north shore of the Oh, wow, serious. Past Port, past Port Jefferson. Okay. Um, so before Riverhead. So if you could draw a line from north to south, you'd go right down to the Hamptons. Got it. The south. So that's, that's how far out. Yeah. That is far out. Um, it's like a state. It it's like yeah, a from different... Brooklyn to the suburb, suburbs like that, that was crazy. Yeah, but you're you're definitely yeah. out in this kind of enclave, you know, or this, that's a very different culture than the city, and it's, uh, you know, you yeah. may, you could be anywhere in the country and almost, uh, in terms of what it's like to live out that far out in Long Island, you know? And when we moved there, you know, there were still potato farms. Yep. So you would, yeah. Mm-hmm. You could smell potato in the air, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah, and then I moved back into Brooklyn because um, my parents had split, so I moved back into Brooklyn I see. a couple years after graduating purchase. Right. So I moved into, back into my apartment that I was born in. Um, Is that my true? My father had moved out. Oh. I'm sorry? Oh, no, I, I, that's, that's quite a, wow, that's a big, big uh, uh, story, yeah. I know, so Brooklyn Heights before it became the posh heights as no. it is now. <laughs> Back uh, in the sixties when my mother was a singer and my father was an artist uh-huh. and had his own uh, advertising design company. 
Um, so there were a lot of artists, musicians. Arthur Miller was living there. Norman Mailer. Yep, I remember. Mm-hmm. Um, a ton of people. Yeah. Um, but I moved back, you know, in the late eighties, and um, wow. my father had moved out. My sister had moved back to Long Island, and I. But yeah, that was my place, and I sold it in two thousand in nineteen ninety nine to buy here in Topanga Canyon. Do you know Topanga? Do you know California? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not specifically, but um, uh, yeah, I know I'm familiar with with the name and uh, th- and its relationship to L- L.A. Yeah, it's up in the mountains, and right. um, that was an interesting time in my life too. So, yeah, all these journeys, and then I look back and oh gosh, why did I? Oh, I went back to my apartment this past summer, oh. and I brought my girl. Um, oh, you have daughters. Them. I have two daughters. Oh, wow. That's not. But how? And twelve. Wow! Right in. The, oh, I have. I have a son right in there, right in the middle. Oh, he's, wow. four, he's fourteen. I, I'm telling you, it's the, the biggest. I waited a long time. To Me have too. Children. I never thought I would have children. Me was too. Not interested mm-hmm. at all. Um, it was all about work and career, and you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, when it when it's right, it's right, and I it's it's the biggest job, the most creative project you could do on the planet. You know. Yeah bringing up children oh yeah i know i love it i'm i'm my ex-wife is actually um heading to la uh next week to do a series she's an actor and uh-huh. uh so i'll be with my kid for quite a bit uh now you know i mean we sh- sort of share him anyway but he's now of also mm-hmm. the age where he can, can kind of go where you you know he has a key to both places you know that kind of thing so right. um but he's um I'm glad I didn't know that Karen Silas was living in Brooklyn only blocks away from me when I was living in, in the, the late 80s myself, when I moved into Carroll Gardens. Oh, my gosh. My, my really? first apartment, essentially. I mean, I, other, outside of school. Yeah, I moved to Carroll Gardens in 87, and I would take long walks when I first moved there because I kind of grew up in Queens, and, in, and then my parents moved to Manhattan uh, when, mm-hmm. I, when me and my sister left. And... Um, so they moved into the village, and I had a, I just, right after I moved to Brooklyn, and I used to take these long walks then, um, like in '87. So when, you know, the months following when I moved, I would walk around because I didn't know these neighborhoods. You know how beautiful Cobble Hill and Brooklyn Heights. I would just take these long walks and discover all these beautiful streets and um, houses, etc. Um, and I'm you know I just has have such great memories back then, uh, thirty years ago. Promenade, yeah. Promenade, oh, yeah. You know, when the World Trade Towers were still there. Yeah, I know. Oh, God. I know. But, uh, um, and then, of course, I actually, go ahead. Yeah. Please do. Go ahead. Um, no, I was going to say that I, I was finally able to bring my, my girl. I rang the doorbell because I sold it to my neighbor. Mm-hmm. My the apartment at night. So, and, right, of course. So, allow you to go visit it. Yeah. And I had never gone back. And I rang the doorbell. And she answered, the one that I sold it to. I said, hi, it's Karen Silas. And she was like, oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she buzzed us up, and, and she showed us the apartment that her son was in now with his two little kids and, and how life could, continues on. You know, it's like, wow. Yeah. Wild. Walking around my, the home that I was born in, the home that I sure. renovated, the, the, the home that I became successful and famous in. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Where I, you know, through how stuff, and that's what I was going to say too, is how's work really did lay the foundation for Tom Noonan and I to um, to work together in what happened was. How so? Um, he he saw Simple Men at one of the festivals, whether, whether it was Sundance, he didn't go to Cannes, but he, and he knew, and we were the same agent at the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I get this, big script and you know we do it as a play first and then we we shoot it and because of that that's how cbs saw me because what happened was was that sundance uh that was long, along with another film that one of mine was um up for as well and uh it won these awards and lisa freiberg the head of cbs casting um asked me to come to la to to meet the head of cbs for this television pilot Wow. And I was on this track of indie films, and I'm a film actress. I'm not a TV actress. Like that, you know, back in the day where there was sure. a little bit of an attitude about, yep. you know, the, uh, you, could say, you could say snobbery. It's okay. Oh, 
It's okay. You can say snobbery. It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> it's all. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that, and then I got my own television series. But I definitely see, you know, from from trust, especially simple men, um, that work in there led me to, you know, having my own series on, on television. Was that was, was that uh, under suspicion? What was the name of the show? Uh-huh. Okay. Yep. Which yeah. ran which ran a couple of seasons. Yeah. And and a change of uh, change of executives um, during that season three to be exact. Wow. Started off with Jeff Zagansky, then went to somebody else, and then Oh Tortorici, and then Let's Move This. Mm-hmm. Which is a whole other conversation. <laughs> um, so yeah, and uh, and then we were canceled when he when he uh, became the head of CBS. Bastard. I'll say it. Yeah. I'll say it. Uh, say it for me. <laughs> <laughs> and how was the experience of working with uh, Tom? Because you know, like I say, he's done. He's been on and. Um, he has a very sing- oh, as well as Hal. I can see why he he would be interested in you. He also has a very very unique style yeah. stylized approach to his his filmmaking. Was that a was that a um, a, a good experience for you? You know, and I, I guess you, you can only say so much if it wasn't. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it was a fabulous experience. Oh, good. Okay. You know, to create to create a a character from a stage play is is pretty remarkable. Mm-hmm. Real, real kept for me, um, and so when we turned it into a film, which I think we shot in eleven days, we mm-hmm. did night night mm-hmm. shoot, um, and uh, it was already so ingrained in me. I was so the character that that was just the easiest thing. And you know, working with 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 Tom was just wonderful. You know, I mean, he's I'm good with all the people. <laughs> You're good with what? <laughs> You're good with awkward what? People. Awkward people. Awkward. Yeah, he no, is I awkward. Mean, because he's, mm-hmm. he's very unique, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and, uh, and once again, very specific about what he wants. Right. Um, and to act opposite him, too, while he's directing, was really cool. Yeah. People should really check it out. I mean, if they... I mean, all these films that we're talking about, uh, you know, and... You, you could have yeah. a you, one, one should uh, can only have benefit from having a Karen Silas uh, film festival over the weekend if you can make it work. <laughs> well, the trilogy will be available in the new box set, so Hal's trilogy, and yeah. I believe what happened was you can see that on Amazon. Uh, I know for a fact that it's available yeah. on Amazon. And check it out because it's a spectacular, and you will never forget this performance. And your character is very memorable in that, um, and. <laughs> He, you know, he he has met his match in you. Um, <laughs> I keep on saying, "What are we doing? What happened next? What happened next? next. What happened was right." I'm like, come on! <laughs> but you know, look, indie indie filmmaking is not for pussies. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it yeah. really right. It's no, not and you easy. you you are part of that, you know, story in that history. I mean, there's yeah. absolutely in terms of your relationships and the. The particular projects you you started making at the at the early end of your career. I recently talked to Peter Riegert. Do you know the actor Peter? Oh, Riegert? yes. I haven't posted it yet, but that that will be one that you know you should listen to. You know, in the now, ad- how do I listen? I just go. Oh. how do I find you? Oh well, you can. I'll I'll give you. Well, it's the the website is filmwax f i l m w a x yeah radio dot com filmwax radio. Oh. So you can just Google okay. that, and lots will come up, and you'll see tons of. Okay. I've been doing this for years; it's kind of nuts. You'll see what a. Obviously, I'm I'm afflicted by OCD or something because I just I'm doing this like almost like an obsessive. I'm a big you know supporter, of course, of Hal. So this was mm-hmm. uh, this was. Um, but I had. How did, how, did, mm-hmm. how did you meet him? That's a good question. Now, I'm trying to recall the circumstances. I think. Jeez, I, I don't even remember exactly how. That, I'd have to look back, but I remember he was doing the Kickstarter for the last box set on, you know, the um, Ned Rifle trilogy or the... the right. Um, um, is that what? No, it was Frank called... Grimm. Uh, right. Henry Fool trilogy. Yeah. Henry Fool Henry trilogy. Henry Fool trilogy. Yeah. yeah. 
So I think I got him just at the right moment. And I, I don't remember, I really just don't remember the initial contact, how that happened. But, you know, again, I living in New York, and he invited me to come to, to his apartment. And it was like supposed to just be a chat, you know. But he had just mm-hmm. done this Kickstarter. I don't even think it was going on anymore. I think I missed it, but I'm not positive. Anyway, so that's how, so I sat with him at the first time. And then uh, each, you know, I, he's done it. Oh, and then it, right after that, he had, he was going through a spurt of um, being busy with uh, like My America, which was the nonfiction yeah, project. Yeah. And so that was at the IFC Center. And I had just started having a relationship with Fandor, that streaming site. Uh-huh. Uh, most of these films have been available on, I think, at one time or another on Fandor.com. And so I was, right. yeah, so I had a bit of a relationship with Fandor around my podcasting. They would, I would do like a Fandor sponsored episode every so often. And and then, so they paired me up with Ted Hope and Ted, and who was running Fandor at the time, and Hal. And so then we got together again. And then I saw him with uh, Ned Rifle at South by Southwest. So it was just all of a sudden, you know, he had this spurt of of activity a couple of years ago before he started with the the you know this new box set. Um, so he had My American Net Rifle coming out pretty quickly. So there was all of a sudden Hal Hartley was out there again. So he was doing press, and that was easy to get to him. And then you know, with the new one, you know, yeah, he invited me to come back. Uh, you know, I talked to him. I said I'd like to help you with your new Kickstarter for the Long Island trilogy box set. So by that point, I mean, he saw somebody who I think was really, you know, championing what he was doing. And so now now we have a kind of a, a, a friendship, you know, which is sure. really, which again is, is, is like sometimes to me, I have to kind of sh- I'm, I remind myself, you know, when in, eight, in those years that I was telling you about, when we were living only blocks away from each other, <laughs> maybe a mile, <laughs> maybe a mile. Yeah, maybe I wasn't, I wasn't lurking around looking for you at the time. Don't worry. But, um, cause I didn't know you were there. If I had, I may have, I don't know. You might have. I might have. I, I seriously, uh, you know, loved everything you were in, but, um, you know, I, that was when those films started coming out. Uh, it was during yeah. that period of, I lived in Carroll Gardens in this one apartment on Smith street from 87 to 93. And um, that's when most of this start started coming out. So I, you know, just just going back and I would never have thought that, you know, 30 years later that I would be, um, I you know, just somebody who was um, all, all of our friends. Thanks. You are friends now. <laughs> and then, you um, know, yeah, I've had on uh, and um, Tom, you know, uh, from from uh, the later somewhat later films. But mm-hmm. um, so I've had on. Uh, you know, it's interesting now that I, I, I we're talking. Um, this actor, uh, director, writer Susan Guassi that I just finished uh, uh, working with this this past summer, and then four years ago we worked on our first piece together called Steps. This one is called T Eleven Incomplete. Yeah, I see it on your page there. But what was the first one? What was the earlier one called? The first one was Stuff. Stuff. Right. Okay. So oh, there it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, it did a festival route for a year, um, and uh, it's now um, oh, Gravitas Distribution. Sure. That's, that's like, okay, so um, but when I was meeting up with this director, writer, Suzanne, she, she uh, addressed me, found me four years ago. I had uh, decided to... Um, let my agent go a few years before that. Uh-huh. And I just posted my uh, my professional email uh, separate from Karen Silas. And she found me and said, I, you know, I, I have this script and I know you through Hal Hartley. So there you go again. Right. Hal, he yep. keeps going around. And ca- he said, she said, I, 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 I was friends with this one person who's friends with Hal. And so I knew during that period in the 80s what was going on. I saw all of your work. Mm-hmm. This is how she's asking me to work with her. So all of your work, Simple Men, Trust, mm-hmm. with him. And that's how I, you know, I, I, I knew who you were back in the 80s. Kind of similar around the time where we should have known each other, but we didn't because we lived only a mile away. Um, but, you know, it's, it's interesting. So that is our, how is our connection with me doing those movies is what made her, and then turns around and, and writes this latest piece 
performing, which is just, you know, an honor and crazy. Well, and, yeah. Well, I mean, there's no there's no denying that what there were a handful of filmmakers at that time in in the yeah. in the indie sphere we're talking about, and he had you know an enormous impact. So it's not so the ripple effect continues. It's not that on you. You know, it's 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 a bit. No, of, it's not a, that unusual. No, but it's still. It, it, I'm sure it still is always a you know strikes you as a as a mar. It's just shocking, you know, at some level that mm-hmm. wow, it still still has this ripple effect all these years later. Yeah. But that shows the impact, you know. It proves it. Um, yeah. You know. Yeah. You're and the, right. And yeah. I, I, you know, I just assume there are people that are interested and out there listening, and um, or who will listen to <laughs> this as well. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> I'm sure. I hope so too. Well, I, me too. You know, you're a special person and um, mm, actor. You. Yeah. And and seriously, if Suzanne, when if you know when the time comes, and if you're doing festivals in the press for the new film T11. Un- incomplete is that what it's called? T eleven incomplete is that what it was called? T eleven incomplete. That's yeah. the working title now. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, I'll keep your info, and uh, she's a New Yorker. Right. Now, so okay. um, she's East Coast. I'm just seeing if I know anybody else. Lived, oh, Louis, Louis in it. No, no, that's not the same guy. I know. Sorry. There's a he has a, this. There's an actor in it who has a very similar name to another actor I know. Um, oh, oh. But um, um, Katie Sullivan. Well. I don't yeah. think I know her. I thought I did. No, I don't know anyone else so far. Oh yeah, Kristen. Renton. Um, yeah. Was oh, Zachary friend. Booth? I th- do know Zachary it's... Booth, who is he? He, he, he was just my in. Son. Oh wow, really? He was just and in I... that uh, film after Louis. Was that what's called? Did you see that I, one? I, I think. Yeah, yeah. After Louis, that um, with yeah, that was very good with um, uh, Alan Cumming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, yeah, I actually just, we just went to yoga class when I was in New York. I always call him up when I'm back east and, um, you know, it's, it's different when you, you, you get to have such a close relationship for a month, you know, a working relationship and then Mm -hmm. continue your friendship. So we, um, went downtown and practiced yoga together (laughs) when I was in New York. This is Zachary? Um, the Zachary. Oh, wow. Okay. Very good. I should. Uh... We have the same yoga teacher for all these years, so wild. Um, and uh, and then just the other night, I went to see Colin Bates, who uh, is one of my co-stars in in this recent film. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's in the play out here, Pasadena Playhouse, called the Picture of Dorian Gray. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, I keep connected. Oh, and then Katie Sullivan, who plays my daughter-in-law. Mm-hmm. Um, is now in a play which last year in New York uh, won the um, she won the Lucille Lortel Award mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. the play The Cost of Living I don't know if you heard about it I did hear that yeah um, yeah so she's the star of that oh and um, now now they're out here so I'm going to see her in that play um, next week so yeah I keep I keep connected with my people mm-hmm. <laughs> well well, keep it connected with, with me, if you would. I appreciate it. Um, I would. Yeah, I'd uh, love that. That yeah. would be wonderful. And did I answer questions? You did. did I give yes. too much, not enough? No, it was perfect. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. I really, good. it was great. Turned out fantastic. So, um, oh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I'm back in New York, I'll, I'll call you and we'll have to take a walk in Brooklyn. That's right, a little re- a little uh, nostalgic walk, uh, uh, hopefully. I, th- I think you can still go down streets that look more or less the same. The skyline has changed yeah. a lot, unfortunately, for the worse, I think. But I know, I know, it mm-hmm. has. But there's something about Brooklyn. And Brooklyn Heights, I just went down to Gumbo. Mm-hmm. I haven't been underneath there. Have you been there lately? Oh, yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I know, it's unrecognizable. It's true. So different. Everything is, is like, whoa. Brooklyn has become a destination, you know. Yeah. Right? It's been oh, a pleasure. Wonderful. All right, so I'll keep in touch and um, about you know as the next couple of weeks go on and okay. follow up on and it. And I'll let you know as we continue also with uh, Suzanne's project. Um, oh, please do, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll definitely yeah. make a point of inviting her on to the show too. Okay, wonderful. All right. um, yeah, her story is very interesting. Okay. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to spoil it. She can tell you herself. Good. <laughs> yeah. I'll look forward um, to that. Okay. Okay. All right. So have a great day. You too. Um, it's like 85 degrees here in LA. So hot. What's, what's it like there in New York? Uh, it's overcast, and it's actually, is it raining right now? It's supposed to rain today, 
it looks like it might be drizzling. Um, but it, yeah, it's a look cool. It's been now in the 50s and 60s, which for November isn't so bad. No, that's you not know. bad. Um, have you had Hal on? Uh, I, well, he's been on the podcast like three, at least three or four times. Um, and so we're okay. gonna, and we're supposed to sit later this week with Robert or Bobby, as you call him, yep. and and Bill Sage. Mm-hmm. Bill Bill's been on once before for a film that he was in. I had already known him and and Lorraine, his wife, for a little while. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he he's he's been on. I, I I used to have my own film series that I was doing, and he he once just came to a, a film. And I, of course, being the geek I am, I knew exactly who he was. I was very excited that, you know, he came. came. <laughs> I was like, oh, my gosh. So, I, you know, so he's, he's, he, so it's supposed to be a little bit of a reunion with Bill and, 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 and Robert. And that's supposed to happen. It might have happened on Wednesday, but I hear now it's either Thursday or Friday. Hopefully, fingers crossed. And I believe Hal oh, will so sit. You're, mm-hmm. you're all going to sit down together? Yeah, that will take place at, that will take place oh, at nice. Hal's apartment. Right, right. Oh, please give everybody my love. I will. In the same room at the same time. <laughs> we'll say hello. We'll we'll take a picture or something. We'll, we'll or we'll we'll send send yeah. a, send a collective hello. Please, please. I will. Are you going to do the radio show there too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect. So yeah. so and and tomorrow I'm supposed to talk to Edie. So as far as I know, mm-hmm. so I love too. Say I, hi. I will. <laughs> <laughs> so I I uh, it's going to be a quite it's for you know that's that's exactly the kind of pro, pro, you know. A uh, project uh, that is perfect for this kind of show, you know, is doing something like that—that mm-hmm. that ambitious type of thing. So I'm very excited mm-hmm. about. It. You're gonna have a real heartly week for yourself. Exactly. <laughs> I'll say maybe a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might want to spread it out next time. <laughs> next I don't time. Know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it's so good to hear your voice, to talk with you, get to Same know here. you, and um, we'll let's be in touch and please okay. connect me uh, with. Any of the podcasts, anything I will. at all, and um, we'll be in touch soon. Okay. Okay. All right, all right Adam. Take care. Have you a too. good day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye.